All right, Shalom, Shalom, giving our praises, glory, and honor to you. How about Hashem, Yahweh, yeah, Shai, by Hashem, Rechla, with Hashem. All right, double honesty, apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to all you Akim out there, preaching this truth throughout the four corners of the earth with truth and sincerity in your hearts and for the love of the gospel. All right, this is the brother Shamar Yah from uh, Great Millstone Branch, Gary, Indiana, coming at you with another truth. I mean, coming, over, coming at you with another video regarding the truth. All right, by the spirit and the strength of the Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai guided me. All right, and this lesson today is going to be about the prophets of old and the prophets today. All right, basically, the prophets in the old, the prophets of old and the prophets today are the, uh, we stand in the same steed. You know, because the prophets of old, the main objective of a prophet is to warn the people. And that's it. The main objective of a prophet is to warn the people. Okay. And um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna jump straight into the scriptures. All right, this is the book of uh, Ezekiel 33, three. Ezekiel 33 and one. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Son of man, speak to the children of my people, and say unto them, and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land." Take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. If when he if when he see if the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. All right. So just those three verses. All right. Let me let me let me let me do my commentary. All right. For verse one, it says, "The word of the Lord came into me saying." It says again, "The word of the Lord came into me saying." So the Lord reiterates. All right. It says the same thing. In Ezekiel, the third chapter, that it's saying right now in 33. Okay, the verse, the second verse, it says, Son of man, speak to the children of my people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, that sword is a representation of destruction. Okay. It says, When I bring the sword upon the land, so that sword representation of destruction, when he brings that destruction upon the land, it says, If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, all right, take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman means what? That he's going to know before the sword come. Before the sword come upon the land, he's going to be able to foresee it. That's why he's called a watchman. Okay, and it says people of their coast. That means a kinsman or someone of their family or their ge genealogy. Not some foreigner that's not familiar with the land or not familiar with the people. Okay. But um, keep going. Verse three: If if when he see if the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Blowing the trumpet is what symbolic of what? Okay, uh, I'm actually going to get it in a different app. Actually, then before I do that, let me put my airplane mode on so it won't be interrupted. So I'm going to get it in a different app. Different. Uh, get into my sword. Get all my precepts in this app. Uh, it's the book of Isaiah 58. Verse 1. Isaiah 58.1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thine voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. So when it says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thine voice like a trumpet. So when he sound the trumpet, sound the alarm, that's him lifting up his voice, telling the people what's to come. It's not actually getting, uh, getting the actual trumpet, all right, and blowing it. But we're lifting up our voice and telling the people and alerting them. The word alarm goes into alert. We're alerting the people what's to come and what to do. To escape the judgment that is coming, that sword. To escape that sword. Okay? Now, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 5. It says, Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither make made up the hedge for the house of Israel. So ye have not gone up to the gaps, nor made the hedge. All right, what's the gaps? What's the hedge? Ye have neither gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge. The gap is a is a space that's empty. Okay. 
a gap of a space that is empty. So putting the, the spectrum in a spiritual standpoint, the gap is those 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 empty doctrines. So our people understand certain things about the truth, like how you're not supposed to eat bread meat or right now on the earth you're supposed to keep a beard. But they don't understand like you're not supposed to get a lining. Okay, they they, they don't understand the whole dietary law. They don't understand that you're not not only are you not supposed to eat bloody meat, but you're not supposed to eat abominable flesh either. So those are those gaps, the things that they don't understand. So we have to fill those gaps in with knowledge. Okay, so we have to go go and fill those gaps in and make the hedge. What's the hedge? The hedge means protection. I bet that word in the Hebrew, if you look it up, one four four seven means a protection. Enclosure, fence, hedge, wall. Okay. Enclosure, a fence or a wall. So it means to be protected. Okay. It says neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the day of the battle of the Lord. Alright, so when the Lord comes back with that sword, the only thing that'll be the only thing that'll be standing between you and that sword is the knowledge. Alright, the filling in the filling in of the gaps. Because that's how you make up the protection of the house of the Lord. That's how you make the protection of Israel by what? The wisdom and the knowledge. Isaiah. Uh, because in that day, if you held by Shumi Awashai, the only thing that will be standing in the way between you and, the, and death is the wisdom and the knowledge of you held by Shumi Awashai. And this is going to the book of Isaiah, chapter 33. Right, in um, 6. Isaiah 33 and 6, it says, And the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thine times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. All right, so the fear, of, the fear of the Lord is going to be your strength of salvation. All right, so the Lord is going to be able to, to save you based off your fear if you're going to, um, play, uh, you're going to, you're going to commit, um, your fear, you're gonna perform his law, all right? Because the fear of the Lord is the performance of the law, okay? Um, from there, because this whole lesson is circled around, circled around uh, the messengers of the Lord, right? And the whole duty of the messengers of the Lord is to warn the people. Verse 4 said, Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Okay? So if he hear the sound of the trumpet, if he hears warning him, and he don't take warning, then the sword come to destruction. Alright? Whatever, what, by, by ever, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever the destruction may be, whether it be dogs, or, or famine. Alright? Uh, another precept. Whatever that sword be, because the sword could be a numerous amount of things. All right, this is the book of uh, Jeremiah 15 and 2. It says, And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither thou we go forth, then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, such as for death to death, such as for the sword to the sword, and such as for famine to the famine, and such as for captivity to the captivity. So, whatever... Whatever um, fate or whatever way of perishing that the Lord has uh, ordained you to suffer, that's just the uh, that's just the uh, the way that the Lord wants you to go. Such as the death for the to the to the death, famine to the famine, the captivity to the captivity, the sword to the sword. Okay. So if you don't take warning, if you don't take heed to the to the apostles and the elders and the, and the words of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, not only just to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone, all right, but to anybody that's speaking the words of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah, because that's who it's all about. That's who it's all about. The words of Yahweh by Shemuel Shah. Okay. Now I'm um, going back to the main point. He shall perish, right? It says, Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come take, and take him away, I mean kill him, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heareth the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that 
taketh warning shall deliver his soul. All right. So he that taketh warning, he that hear these words and say, okay, I believe. I believe that the sword is coming. I can see it. So it's really based upon who the Lord gives his eyes to hear, uh, ears to hear and eyes to see to. Okay. Because if you go to Isaiah chapter 20, 29, uh, 30 and 321. This is everybody who's going to hear the word of the Lord and turn from it. Book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. says in thine ears in thine ears shall hear that in the word but it says in thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it and when ye turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left all right so that 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 word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it that lets you know that you're going in the wrong direction all right that lets you know you're walking in the wrong direction and that you're going to hear, you're going to hear a word behind you saying this is the way and then the only one the only people that's going to hear that word is the people who you help by Shemir or Shai is ordained to hear it, okay? So going back to Jeremiah, to the main point at hand. Okay, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Ezekiel. But it's the second part to this. The second part is if, if it says verse 6, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, so he don't warn the people, even though he see the famines to come and the pestilence and the dark day of the Lord, it says, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away from his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So the Lord is going to require the blood of the people who we do not warn at our hand that's why it's imperative for us to go out on the highways and the byways week in and week out prophesying the downfall of this place prophesying the sword to come warning the people which is symbolic of blowing the trumpet all right verse 7 so thou O son of man i have set thee a watchman into the house of israel therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me and that's the whole point because the prophets of the days of old have done the same thing let me get this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 87. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. And this word is what the words that the Lord has put into our mouth to speak. And once the Lord put the words into your mouth to speak, there's nothing that you can do to, 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 to defer it or, to, you know, to, to, say, to say no against it. To disagree against it. Verse 8, it says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and great and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And it's the same thing in my steed, all right? Same thing in my steed. Prophets that have been before me and before thee of old. Meaning who? All the prophets of Moses. Prophets of Aaron. All right, the uh, the prophet, all these prophets. All right, when you read when you read the Old Testament, all of these people were prophets. In the New Testament, man, Matthew, John, Mark, Luke. All right, all these people were prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, all of these people were prophets. All right, all of them were prophets. You know. So all the prophets that have been before, and the main example, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, um, I can't say a lot. Let me choose my words wisely. The, one of the main prophets that spoke the downfall of the major kingdoms. Now, a lot of prophets have spoken the downfall of a lot of kingdoms. You know, you got Daniel, and you got Jeremiah. They all spoke the downfall of uh, Babylon. You got a, you got a Jonah who spoke the downfall of a Assyrian kingdom in Nineveh, okay. But the main one is Moses, okay. Moses is is, a, is one of a, he's, I believe that he's uh he's he's the king. He's the he's the he's Israel one of Israel's first kings, 
that led Israel out of the land of captivity for 400 years. One of the longest captivities that Israel ever faced. Okay, he has he he was a prophet that has prophesied. And I'm just using him as an example of many. Okay, it says he prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And this is in in this country today, America. Not only America, but the bees itself, the 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 the, the image of the Roman Empire, the people who rule the society, the Edomites. All right, they are the head of the society that we that is being ruled today. No matter it be Asia or, or, or Pakistan or they they rule everything. Okay, the Edomites rule everything. Okay, and this is this is a kingdom of uh, war, evil and pestilence. Okay, but we're doing the same thing that Moses have done. Even in, in the ancient world, it says the prophet which prophesied of peace. When this word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Okay, and let me get one more scripture to close it up. This is the book of uh, and, and regarding that last verse that I just read, man, all of these people that deny us, all of these people that deny you, how about Shemiah Shah? Because the glory is not of us, but it is of the Lord. At least, if you're not gonna give out, if you're not gonna give the Lord His glory, then what makes you think that He's that these people are gonna give you any rec any acknowledgement at all? You know, they're not even going to give it to the Lord. But it's okay, it's fine. We don't need any acknowledgement from any people. All we need is the acknowledgement of you. How about Shemi I was shy? But um, what's the last verse I'm gonna get? My uh, Malachi. Two and eight, start seven. Malachi two and seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law of his mouth. And if he is the, it says, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. And that's the, that's the point. The point is that he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. We are the spiritual heroes. We have come to deliver a message. All right. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many people. Ye have caused many to stumble. At the law, you have corrupted the, the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, but the point is that we are the messenger of the Lord of hosts. All right, because the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and we are going to warn the people. Okay? So, um, hopefully, this lesson has been edifying to the elect of Israel. And um, all praises to you. How about How about Allow me to do this lesson. God bless the apostles and the elders for teaching me this truth. And peace and salutations to all you walking out there preaching this truth throughout the four corners of the earth for truth and sincerity in your hearts. Until next time, I say shalom.